Hello, I'm Trisha at Club Scrap and welcome to the Lavender Fields Remix Page Kit Workshop. I know that's a mouthful. So if you're working with an old Lavender Fields kit from many uh, years ago, uh, this, is, this is not the right video for you. Make sure you're looking at the remix. And this was filmed in 2023. So just double check. I've got my instructions here. Lavender Fields Remix, it says on top. And I have my accordion pocket file, my handy little organizer to keep track of all the pieces we'll trim all at the same time for the eight layouts we're about to make. I'll take this little lip on the front end of my uh, organizer and place it under the base of my trimmer. Okay, and then I have all of these wonderful ribbons. We're not gonna use those quite yet. We'll set everything aside, as well as all of these little goodies that came in the kit, which you're going to love. They're just darling. And let's see, I'm gonna cut apart on top here. What I want to do first is sort the paper into the order we'll be either trimming or using it. Uh, to do that, I just like to stack it all up neatly and hold it upright so I can just sort through from the top edge here. First, I want you to find this beautiful script print. We're just calling it the script print because it has some script in the background here. Take one of those and then just put it face down on your trimmer base. And then I'm gonna find the field print. So it's pretty obvious this is the field print. There is some script on it, but it's more field than script. <laughs> Flip that over to the plain side on the base of your trimmer. Next, find two lavender. Now the lavender is basically what I would call a, a purple, okay? Um, but we just went with lavender because, because, because we can. So two of those. Next, find the dark green. So to find the dark green, you might wanna just compare the two greens that we've included. Um, this is the light, this is the dark. So I'm gonna grab two. Now there are three that you were given, I believe. So just take two of those, dark green. Then you have two lavender metallic. It's the only lavender in the kit that's metallic. It's got a beautiful texture, like a ridge texture, very fine. It is white on the um, back side. It's a little bit of a lighter weight. So those will go face down. Then cut aparts. Usually those are collated on the back of the stack. That's what the way Deb does it. Uh, let's see, find the one that has all the borders on it, especially this wide strip here. Put that face down, followed by the other one with the smaller elements. Next up, just take two of the three white linen. So you have three. We only want two at this point. And uh, I'm going to put them linen side down because the back side is a little bit more smooth than the right side. And then two of the light green. Let's just grab both of those. And how about one dark green? It's easier, right? Now that we're almost to the bottom of the stack. And then the remaining field print. So that's this one. Your remaining white linen. I'll again put the linen side facing down. And then we have the remaining script print, the last one in the stack face down. If you have something left over there or something's not quite right, just go go back to the be beginning of this chapter and uh, just check everything over. Then I'll flip the whole stack over back to where we started with that script print. When you put this into the trimmer, do so so that's right side up. In other words, the uh, lavender's hanging down from the top edge here. And I'll unlock the blade by pulling outward from this little notch right here. If you don't have this trimmer, I highly recommend it. It really sets you up to be successful with our unique and efficient method here. Lift the blade all the way up. And then I want you to find eight and a quarter. So make sure you're looking at, not at centimeters, but at inches. Find the whole number eight, and then each column represents a quarter of an inch. So go left to grow that number to eight and a quarter. So just go left one column. Before you cut, stabilize on the clear bar. And when you do cut, just let that paper lay where it lands without moving it. Okay, now lift that blade, slide again down to three and a half. Three and a half, stabilize on the clear bar once again. There you go. Now you have this piece you just made and the one that just fell. Both of those are used in layout five and six. So I'll just quick show you when you're filing a 12 inch piece like this, make sure you go at an angle into the pocket so you can still see the number here and it's kind of angling out to the right. That allows you to view the number properly and the pocket's only 12 inches wide and so is the paper. You don't want to just try to shove it in there. The remaining piece or the first piece that fell, that goes in pocket one and two. And we're moving on already to the field print. Here, let's find nine and three quarters. So to review, you'll find the whole number nine. Go left three columns then to find nine and three quarters. So nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a half, 
nine and three quarters. Stabilize. And slide now to four. That's nice and easy. So take this piece and place it in pocket seven and eight. And then this center section, we're gonna trim it into a scrap and three mats, basically. So it doesn't really matter which way, as long as it's horizontal. I'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. So the three pieces that are the same that you just made, pocket seven and eight, there's a small scrap that fell off the end. You can just set that aside as a scrap. And then this also is used in seven and eight. And we are on to the lavender. Now you have two there. Make sure you just grab one. Let's cut this one at 10 and a half. Six and a quarter. We're going to make some photo mats here. We'll do quite a bit of this actually. Rotate this piece so it's horizontal now and trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter. You made two photo mats with the same size, pocket one and two. And then this leftover piece here will trim at six and three. You can take this this piece that's in the trimmer right now. It's a little different than the diagram, but it's fine. Rotate it so it's horizontal and trim at two and a half. Place this smaller piece in pocket one and two. And the little piece that fell off the end, that's a scrap. So I'll just get rid of that. The slightly larger one that goes in five and six. And now I'll pick up the largest piece that remains. We'll trim it horizontally in half. So that's just at six. These two pieces go in pocket one and two. Oh, there is a little scrap too that fell off the end earlier. You don't need that. And this longer strip, five and six. Grab the next lavender. We'll trim some paper ribbons. In other words, just some thin, skinny pieces here to use for anchoring and bordering on our pages. So our first cut is actually at a really big number, 11 and three quarters. So I'm almost to the 12. Remember to stabilize as always. Then 10 and a half. Nine and a quarter. And six and a quarter. Rotate. We'll cut this into thirds. So we'll trim at eight and four. And that gives me three pieces the same for pocket three and four. And then this piece is gonna be trimmed at all different weird measurements, and I, but I promise every cut serves a purpose. So the first cut is at 11 and a quarter, 10, eight and a half, six and a half, four and a quarter. So every piece there, every single one was a different size. The first and largest, five and six. The next one in the stack, seven and eight. The next one, five and six. The next one, seven and eight. And this one, pretty narrow here, five and six. The very last one is a scrap. So if you didn't know by now, this is why you don't move anything when it falls, because I say the next one, the next one, the next one. That's how I know, you know, everything will be on your desk the way it is on mine. So it makes just life easy. Um, then you have the two strips here that are the same, three and four. And this really skinny one, the last piece, five and six. And we are moving on to one sheet of the dark green. So you should have one on your trimmer base and one next to your trimmer. We'll start here at nine and a half. And this next cut, I even put it in bold because it's different than the norm and I don't want you to make a mistake here if you don't have to. And we'll cut at six and a half. Now I'll rotate, trim at 11 and three quarters, eight and a half, four and a quarter. 
the two pieces the same here. Those go in three and four. Then you have a smaller rectangle with trim at four. The four inch piece goes in pocket one and two, and the smaller one, seven and eight. This little bitty scrap, you can set that aside. Pick up the three inch strip now, and let's trim at 10 and a quarter and six. Pocket one and two, pocket three and four on the smaller one, and the really smaller one. This is a pretty big scrap for me, but I, I didn't find a home for it, so I'm sure you probably could. And then the final long strip here, pocket seven and eight, and we're going into the remaining dark green. Let's trim another one of those little paper ribbons. So we're starting out at 11 and three quarters, and then 10 and a quarter, and then six and a quarter. That's the one we normally trim at, six and a quarter, especially for these special release kits where we don't have photo mats. That's what we're doing right now, making photo mats. Rotate and cut at eight and a half, and four and a quarter. The one in the trimmer here, that goes in pocket one and two. And then the other one, five and six. Now we have the rectangle. This is also a typical routine that we do for this. Trim horizontally at six and three. And the reason we create that little scrap there is because otherwise we'd be cutting at three and an eighth, and a lot of you don't like doing that, but it's not a necessary scrap, but it just makes life easier. Both of these rectangles pocket five and six. The next strip will just cut in half at six. And take your two mats here, put them in pockets seven and eight. And then the last two pieces, the wide and skinny, both go in one and two. And moving on to the lavender metallic. More ribbons here, so we'll trim at 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. 10 and a half. Six and a quarter. Rotate. Eight and a half. Four and a quarter. These two pieces here, seven and eight. And then the rectangle, we're gonna do this. This is another repeat again, six and three. The two rectangles you just made, pocket three and four. And you do have a little scrap there. Trim this wider strip here at nine and six. Larger piece, pocket three and four, and the two smaller rectangles, five and six. This wider strip, three and four, it's not that wide. And then the remaining two really skinny guys, seven and eight. Next, the remaining lavender. We'll trim at 11, eight and a quarter, six and a quarter, now we're gonna do our little photo mat making routine. So we're gonna make two, two full size mats and then those two rectangles using the same thing, okay? So rotate and trim at eight and a half, four and a quarter. These two go in pocket five and six. And then the rectangle will trim again horizontally at six and three to make those two rectangles and place it in pocket five and six. Now we have this narrow strip. Ooh, sorry to tell you, there was that little scrap there again. Oh, yikes, lots of scraps. Okay, this narrow strip, um, and it's a two by 12, okay? We're trimming at nine and a quarter, six and a half, three and a quarter. So the piece you ended with in the trimmer, pocket one and two. The next one in five and six. The last two are the same and a little shorter, seven and eight. This wide strip, seven and eight. The skinny strip, three and four. 
And now we've arrived at our sheet of cut aparts. It's our tradition then to remove the outside perimeter to create a 12 by 12. Right now it's at about 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter. And we do this so that um, everything starts out nice and neat on those massive industrial size trimmers. Sometimes um, it doesn't get it on the mark. And so I know that you can. And when I make my first two cuts, sometimes I just cut a little generously. So now when I rotate again to this edge, I can see the edge of my blade, both at the top and bottom of my trimmer. And if you have this trimmer, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I might make six cuts instead of four cuts, just to make sure everything is nice and accurate here. And then when I make this rotation, I can actually look at the 12 and safely trim that edge off and then look at the 12 here, my final cut. And now I have these little, little scrappies. I'll throw those away and rotate the, the print so that this lighter green border is on the right or the widest, or the, I'm sorry, the narrowest is on the right. And our first cut here will be at 10 and three quarters. Same thing is true here. Let it fall and stay there. Nine and a half. Eight and a half. And if you want to, as a fail safe, when I call it the measurement and you find it, you look here and you'll see that the blade is separating the elements. Seven and a half. Six and three quarters. Six. Two and a half. So this piece that ended in the trimmer, put that in seven and eight. And then I'm going to carefully pick up the entire stack off the, the table here. And I can deal it out from my hand more easily than picking up one piece at a time. So again, this larger piece too, that goes in seven and eight with the other. The next two just floral borders, three and four. The two darker green strips, three and four as well. This something beautiful is on the horizon, one and two. And finally, five and six on that last light green. Nothing left there, so now we can move on to our other sheet and we're gonna give it the same little treatment on the border. So I'm just gonna remove two edges shy of that guideline, but when I make that third turn, I can align up here in the upper corner and I can see well in the lower right corner to make sure it meets well with my blade. Then I rotate again, I carefully line up those guides. And this rotation, I can look at the 12 and it should line up nice, taking off just a hair. And then my final rotation here, same thing. Get rid of my scraps. Let's position this into the trimmer so the words picture for perfect are on the left and I was be on the lookout would be in the upper right corner. And we'll begin at nine and a half. Six and three quarters. And four. Now we rotate and we do so, so that the narrowest piece will be on the right. And trim at nine and three quarters. And six. We take the six inch piece, pocket one and two. The next piece we need to trim and separate the who's who from the joy. <laughs> so that's three. So joy should be on your left, who's who's on your right. And trim at three. Joy goes in one and two, as does the who's who. Both of these pocket one and two and the final little caterpillar quote seven and eight let's pick up our next strip and make sure that stop and smell the lavender is on your right we'll trim at 11 nine and three quarters eight and four all right, this lovely and also the horizontal journaling prompt here, both of them go in five and six along with, because I said so, every mom ever. So all of that, five and six. Then you have the simply amazing seven and eight and stop and smell the lavender also five and six. Next strip, make sure your journaling prompt is on the left and we'll start at 10, then eight, and four. Those are nice and easy. 
Okay, this vertical journaling prompt, three and four. Live your life and forget your age, five and six. Amen to that. Then you have this little scripty box, seven and eight. A beautiful thing is never perfect, also seven and eight. We're down to the last strip of trimming here. We'll start out at nine and a half, seven, and four and a half. This green piece, pocket three and four. This is the life, pocket one and two. Enjoy the gifts of nature, five and six. And the little bucket of lavender, three and four. Well done, my friends. We do have a little pile of scraps here. I hope it's not, not too disturbing for you to just take this whole pile here and, I don't know, just let it go. We can just let it go. If you want to save this pretty pretty big monstrosity here, you could. The rest of this, I, I'm just going to you know, go ahead and put it in the circular file. <laughs> okay, that said, our, our trimming is over. So, well done. I know that's a lot of trimming, but the cool part is it's done. And now we can just focus on finishing our pages. We're going to do something I call the dry fit process. And that just means we're not going to be using adhesives at this time. I'll talk you through where the pieces go. And we're going to work our way backwards from layouts seven and eight up to layout number one and two. So that way everything will be placed kind of where it's going to be. And layout number one will be on top, ready for you to tackle in your own time, in your own time frame. So to get started, let's turn to the last page, which is page five of the instructions, if you're using them, or scroll on your tablet or whatever. Find layouts seven and eight. You can see a lot of pieces listed here. Basically, most of these pieces are already in your pocket, ready to use, and then it also lists the base of the layouts and then the goodies used on the page. So we've already queued everything up for that, so I can take the entire stack of papers that remain. Make sure you have the whole stack, not just the top sheet. Take the top sheet and slide it off to the right. So the center of your workspace here is in the middle, you know, and then you've got this sheet on the right side and this sheet on the left side, and it should both be the white linen. And in fact, that is the listing for the base. Uh, the left base and right base is two white linen planes. Ta-da! So I have it all queued up starting from layouts seven and eight. Now we go into the pocket labeled seven and eight, obviously, and take everything out. Make sure it's your pocket's empty. And I like to hold all the pieces in my hand. If you feel comfortable doing that, I know like dexterity wise, maybe you don't feel comfortable. Um, what I have learned is that this is probably the most efficient way to distribute the pieces. Let's begin with taking this, this larger field print portion. And I believe this is gonna go on our left edge of the spread. Then you have this wide piece of green and you can place that pretty close, maybe about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And then you should be able to nest this other portion of that uh, field print on top of it. It should fit nicely. Then you have kind of a wide piece of a lavender metallic. You have a little area in there and nest it with this combo journaling prompt sentiment strip. Then we have these three rectangular shaped mats and they should fit right in that space perfectly. I mean, if you wanted to do it so that they are put together the way they started, <laughs> you could always do that. Okay, then on the left side, you can take this really large piece here. Oh, wait a second, before I do that, I'm gonna have you take one of these little lavender metallic ribbons, and I call it a ribbon just because it looks like one, even though it's paper, and it shoves right up against this to transition from the print to the plane in a really beautiful way. Then take this really wide border strip here, and we're gonna also give that a little flanking with a little strip there. Now above it, I'll add two lavender metallic vertical mats. Spacing is about equal all around. And then I'll nest them with our green. All we have left now are these little miscellaneous things. So we have two lavender metallic. We'll get rid of those right away. Those are gonna go kind of here. And these balance these larger. You might say, Trisha, why do you put all those little mats all around? Well, it has to do mathematically with what's the outcome of what's left from the paper from trimming things. 
Um, and also it balances our layouts a little bit. So you have your favorite photos are your larger ones and your supplementary ones are your smaller ones. Um, Karen often just preserves the sizing of her photos and spreads one photo out over the two smaller mats. So finishing touches, those are gonna be all on you. Then you have your little caterpillar quote. From the goodies, I did add one of these chiffon uh, deals. I may not keep it there because it might add a little bulk. Okay, then I've got this Simply Amazing nesting onto the purple. So do you see how, yeah, that was the same width I looked at that. Okay, this is gonna go over here, stabled it with some ribbon. Then this, a beautiful thing is never perfect, nests onto the lavender and you can place that right there. It's gonna match the edge of your border strip, kind of become part of it. Then this other green is gonna go right on top of that strip, it's gonna line up with the edges. Take one of the little uh, muslin bags then, and this piece just slides right in there. It's not really serving a purpose. You could add a photo to this and then it really could, but it's just kind of a sweet little essence of lavender fields. All right, now you have this ribbon here. And so I'm gonna trim two strips, two lengths of it, the w a little wider than the bag. Okay, then you can take some adhesive and put it on that green piece and this will nest right on there and give you a nice uh, sturdy backing. Then take the silver leafy wreath here and thread some ribbon through it. And I like to split the ends like in a V shape and then center the ribbon onto the muslin bag, wrap the ends around to the back. Just kind of have them split the way you want them split. Then take some tape, your favorite kind, whatever you like to use. I know Karen uses washi tape a lot. Then I'll thread from this side. This ribbon is so wonderful and easy to work with. You're gonna love it. And then I'll secure this. And I have a beautiful page embellishment that didn't take a whole lot of time. And that's gonna go right there. So let's take a look at our finished pages to see if I missed anything else. Oh, yes. Um, the little purple gem, heart-shaped gem, that was adhered with our bookbinding glue. You can see I need to refill my little needle tip applicator. And I just, instead of putting the bookbinding glue on the heart, I put it on the paper and then bring the heart to the paper. And that's like the last thing I do for the page to call it done. And you can see how sweet that turned out. And then on the facing page, here is my little organza. You could use a glue dot, you could use book binding glue, as long as you put some weight on there to make sure it bonds well with the paper. I think that's what I did in this case. Here, this was mounted with foam adhesive circles after I stapled a small piece of ribbon to the top of the nested cut apart. That said, let's take the base for layout seven now. We're just gonna, as I said, we're dry fitting, so we're not using adhesive at this stage of the game. Um, that would be something you can do on your own. So drag seven on top of eight, and then take the next top sheet and slide that over. And now you have the base for layouts five and six. So empty that pocket. Make sure you have everything to avoid confusion and disappointment. <laughs> and I'm adding it to my hand once again for easier distribution. Now you have a wider piece, I believe is this one, that's gonna go this way. And I know there's script on it, but I'm using it in a different way to add variety to the overall appearance of the layouts. I really like how it turned out. So hope you don't mind the sideways script. I kind of liked the lavender coming in from the sides of the layout. Um, below this, up this one on the left, add the lavender paper ribbon, and then two horizontal lavender metallic mats and then you should have some dark green smaller rectangles those are going to go right here okay now over on this other side there's a wide piece of lavender that can nest with the light green strip and you have your large green photo mat and then flanking it are two and this is another great reason to cut off that little scrap because when you do this and i space them about a quarter of an inch apart you see how it makes a nice box shape these edges all kind of line up and the spacing is equal i think that looks extra nice it's just me 
Then you have kind of a larger, skinnier lavender piece. I'm going to have that going kind of down into over that border strip and nested with the lovely. This one does get one of those cute little resin bottles. Oh my gosh, I just couldn't believe my luck when I found those. Okay, and this uh, darker lavender, smaller rectangle goes above it. Now you have the larger mat here. We'll nest it with the other, let's see, journaling prompt. And then you have the larger lavender uh, that nests with live your life and forget your age. Let's kind of go here. And I kind of tucked it under because I could easily actually up a little bit and over like so. So the corner is kind of up to the word age right there. And you have a smaller little piece that should nest this guy. And on top of it, I put one of those organza pieces again, a little purple gem over here. Everybody's got a mate. So because I said so, this will be stapled with some purple ribbon and layer on top of here. And this piece, no larger than two and a half inches. So two and a quarter would probably work really well. Um, cut that out. Otherwise, leave it square. But I had it kind of nesting right in this area here. And I also did add some ribbon. Um, so let's talk about that. Here we have the, the bag with the circle punched and then the purple gem added here. This was added also with book binding glue. It dries clear, so it works really well. And again, the stapled folded ribbon. On the facing page, I made uh, a three-part bow here. So this is part one, is a flat piece cut about the width of the opening. Part two of the bow is a loop made to fit shorter than the original piece. Part three is the smaller piece that just wraps around to connect the two. And then I added the whole thing with some glue lines. Here, this was added with a glue dot, I can tell. And then our bookbinding glue for the purple gem. And you have a really beautiful eye-catching page title without a whole lot of effort. Time to slide and stack. All right, so let's take this light green. This is the base of layout five. And plop it on top of six. And then you slide the next one over. So let's just check... Yes, layout three and four. The left side is the field print. The right side is the dark green. And we need the contents of pocket three and four at this point out of the pocket. And again, I like to put it in my hand. We have a lot of uh, border stripping happening here. So I'm going to start out with this lavender strip. Now these run in two parallel lines across across the bottom portion of this layout. And then we have like a connecting sentiment. So the left side says, this world is but a canvas, and it continues to our imagination. That's why I put these side by side. And then you have your a little space, and you have a lavender, a, a metallic, nested with that pretty little border. So it just really anchors the page beautifully. Kind of in the middle. So we have this going on here and this going on here. So I chose to put this in between them and they get nested with some lavender there's a large green rectangle and that's going to be anchored by the strip here and that'll be your journaling prompt this is a spot where I use the other uh, silver wreath and the same ribbon trick but that time with organza and believe it or not I even plopped a purple heart gem right in the middle of that, which I think turned out so sweet. Now here, I'm gonna start out with a vertical lavender metallic, and above it, this piece. Then, this will go horizontally. So I might wanna move this down, and give it a little more air. So these top edges are level, you'll see in the image, in the instructions, and then these kind of can overlap. And then this gets placed right here. Do you see how it fits like a puzzle? I love it when that happens. I added some ribbon and one of the organza pieces here. Let's take a look. So here's my puzzle page. I used my grid ruler to help me keep all my lines level. This is probably a quarter of an inch and I probably started adhering everything here. It looks like this is right up against the lavender metallic and the lavender border strips touch. And then here, do you see again, the spacing is just so nice, so pleasing. I did my double looped uh, cotton, white cotton here, and then topped it with the organza blossom. On the facing page, 
nothing too crazy going on here, but I did the same type of ribbon attachment. And I love that with the chiffon or organza, you can still see the wreath through it and um, the little heart there in the center. So sweet. All right, we are rounding the corner to the finish line here. Let's slide the base of layout three, slide the white linen over on top, and now we have the base for layouts one and two. Simply empty the contents of the pocket, and away we go. Uh, let's see. I think this piece is gonna go right here. So it carries over what's happening on the left side over to the right, and we're gonna flank that with our little paper ribbon. On the left, we are gonna create our own little separator here. With the green nested with something beautiful is on the horizon. And then we have, oh boy, let's see here. We've got different sizes of things going on. Now with your purple mats here, you have two that are longer and two that are shorter. So as you're trimming your photos, just be mindful um, that I give you the size the photo needs to be to fit perfectly into a certain spot, all right? Now take the two that are longer, and those are gonna be vertically placed right here at the bottom of the left side. The two that are shorter are gonna be placed horizontally on the right side. The way you'll know you have it correct is when you add the skinny green, it should be the same width as the shorter ones. This is all the same width in here. Then you have a larger green and you're going to nest it with this guy. Your last little muslin bag here should have the same insert that you can, if you wish, you can round the corners if you want, just for a little extra, extra something, something. And then you have this, which maybe you've punched, maybe you've uh, die cut it into a circle, that's up to you. And you can top that with a little gem in the opening below the word is, this is the life. Okay, then you have this rectangle and it fits right there as a mat for your photo. And the word joy, you're gonna tuck that right behind as well as the who's who. So they can, we can fake it and make it look at the same length. And then I took the remaining little resin um, perfume bottle and I just actually took a little wax linen thread and tied a little bow around the top. It's not necessary, but you can if you happen to have it and you want to. All right, here's two. This is the finished little thing. I did tie this into a little bow. That's optional. And here's my little flower. And so on this half, I just have regular adhesive. And on this half of the circle, I put foam adhesive to keep it kind of level. Totally optional. Um, you can also see that I added a full length of the organza, of which I had plenty. I have two full yards to work with, which is, again, why I stretched the organza across the entire page first. Then I secured the ends and tied a smaller piece onto the stretched ribbon. It looks like I faked. I mean, I totally faked it because I didn't just tie this in a knot and have it look like that. Here you can see the wax linen cord or wax cord attached to the top. It just adds a little something to it. And again, you might not like these. You might feel that they're a little two dimensional. Um, and I understand you could omit them. Um, I just, you had to have them. I had to buy them because they were fabulous and could not have been more perfect. So I'm using them on my pages. I hope you, I do hope you like those. Gosh, that rounds out the entire workshop. We have finished our dry fitting process. And now what you can do is proceed with adhering everything. Make sure you have your grid ruler handy to keep everything nice and neat and level. And um, if you want though, you could just reinsert all of this back into your project bag and hang on to it until you go to your next big crop. So when you go to that crop, you simply grab this stack of pages and make sure you also include the remaining goodies and your instruction document in with the package so that you can follow the pictures and assemble while your friends look on in complete shock, amazement, and admiration for the level of productivity you have as you finish up your pages. So you show up at this crop, you don't really need a whole lot. You don't have to haul in, you know, seven trips from the car. You have your prepped pages. You've been working on them all year long. You have a nice big brick of photos and you start matching your photos to your pages and you will be amazed at what you can accomplish. It's just incredible. So thank you very much for joining me. If you haven't already, make sure you like this video. Make sure you um, leave a comment. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other fun workshops coming from Club Scrap. I look forward to seeing you again in a future class. Thanks again for joining me.